friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video requested by my patrons over on Patreon. They voted this month for me to show you what is going on inside of my prop boxes. A little prop box tour. So that is what I am prepared to do today. As you can see I've got lots and lots, big boxes, small boxes, medium boxes, everything going on here. So I'm going to show you what's inside all of these and how it's all doing. Before I do that, I just want to say if you're new here and you don't know me already, hi, my name is Emma and I make House Plenty content all over the internet. So if you want to follow along with my House Plenty journey and maybe learn something along the way, stick around, watch more of my videos and subscribe to my channel. If you're not new here, thank you so much for coming back. I really appreciate it. Now let's have a look inside of these. So I guess I will do this box first. And this one's actually like kind of empty on this side because I, um, whatchamacallit, I took a bunch of stuff out of here for the swaps. I think I had my white princesses and stuff in here for the plant swap. So I've got a bit of room that I can fill, um, which is awesome. But what I have here is a Hoya Wayetii. Oh gosh, is that the right word? Um, but a variegated one. And this one, it doesn't really look super rooted. It's got a couple of roots in there, but for the amount of time that I've had it in this box, it is really not rooted and I'm not really sure if it will ever. Um, next to it, I have this one, which is, I think, the non-variegated version of the same. I could be wrong with this. I'm not like the best versed in Hoyas, but as you can see, it's got so, so much more rootage in here like the moss is like proper sticking to it i could probably at this point pot this one up it's always good to do these videos because i always kind of forget about these boxes and don't look at them for so long <laughs> that i just kind of forget that i need to pot these things eventually so ooh, i don't know maybe i'll chop into bits like each node because it is really rooted throughout so i could probably get away with doing like four small cuttings of it i mean this leaf looks a bit off but I mean, it's not, it's not loose. It doesn't feel like it's going to come off. So not too sure, but there's tons and tons of roots on there. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not worried about this one. I should probably take it out soon though. Because I think it's probably time. We've got a couple tiny, ooh, if I can pull them out, um, tiny Syndapsis moonshine cuttings. Um, I think these were just wet sticks that I chucked into the prop box. And again, they're rooting quite well. They don't have quite enough roots for me to be comfortable potting them up, but I think they will soon. There's another one down here. They're just chilling and slowly rooting. I find they take so, so long to root Syndapsis um, and so long to sprout new growth as well. So. I just leave them for quite a while and that's why these prop boxes are good because I don't really need to think about like watering the moss or anything when they're in here because it's so humid that they just get all of the moisture they need from sort of the air of the box. So this, I am not sure what type of Hoya this is. <laughs> I'll have to see if I can find it. I did for a while start putting things in like pots in this box in order to hopefully keep them like a bit more separated because one of the things I struggle with with a big like moss box like this is that the roots get quite tangled in there and it makes it harder for them to come out. So when I have things in pots like this, it is easier, but they do end up rooting through the bottom of the holes as well. So it may not be the best thing ever, but I mean, the moss looks so healthy. Look at that. And that's the joy of living moss. It like, it will just like keep growing and growing and you kind of have almost an infinite source of moss if you keep it happy. I'm not sure how rooted this one is inside here, but if it's coming out the bottom, it probably has a good decent set of roots, so I could probably pot it up sometime soon. But I just, I don't know if I will. <laughs> we'll find out. But that's kind of what's going on in here for now. I've not got tons, and I think I'll probably end up filling this space more when I have like more cuttings to put in here. 
but I'm kind of leaning away from this type of box at the minute because it just gets so tangled. Though I do really like how much like growth I get on the moss, so it's kind of a balance and I'm not totally sure if I want to keep doing prop boxes like this. They work really well, it's just a bit more complicated and I end up forgetting about them. Oh, oh my god, I didn't even show this. Okay, dumb. So this here... I can't believe I just forgot about this because it's a lovely little plant. I think this is a Syndapsis Platinum or it might be a piece of my like potentially a tattoo, not too sure. Either way, it's one of those super silvery Syndapsises and it is doing quite well. There's definitely some roots going on there, which is really good. And it does have some new growth as well. So it is happy enough being in here. I find, I feel like these boxes work the best for things like Syndapsis where you don't need to like look at them for a really long time because they're so slow at propagating that it's kind of the perfect thing. Anything that takes longer to root, something like this is great. Things that root faster, I kind of, probably wouldn't put them in boxes like this because I wouldn't remember to take them out soon enough if I kept most things in boxes like this. So that is the end of this box. So I'm leaning more towards boxes like this where I have like a bunch of things in individual containers in moss. And the joy of boxes like this is I don't have to worry about roots getting tangled, but I can still keep the high humidity. Like you can see the sides of the box are still very humid. You can even like put a layer of water at the bottom if you wanted to keep it super humid. If all of the things that you have in are things without holes, which is what I'm doing. So I have everything in either plastic cups like this or like glass containers. Also, sorry if the light's changing, it's spraying and so the clouds are coming in and out. In this one, I actually have some things that I got from the swap. It is the Epipremnum Panatum dark blue form, and then the Philodendron Burlimarks Fantasy. Um, ignore what it says on the cup, I'm just reusing it. I couldn't get the sticker off. Actually, I can get the sticker off very easily. So, goodbye sticker. But again, just in moss, these are like very, very new in here, so they're definitely not rooted. Got this, which I've actually never heard of before I got it. This is actually a present from one of my friends, and it is an Epipremnum white, white leopard, white white panther that's what it is a white panther and it looks kind of like an enjoy or pearls and jade with its sort of marbling and like small leaves but it i don't know it, it looks different from the enjoy and the pearls and jade and i can say that because i have a pearls and jade in here as well so that's the pearls and jade here and like you can tell that they're definitely not quite the same they're quite similar but they are not the same. This one doesn't have tons of roots yet. It might have a couple, but again, this one's new in here. This has been in here for ages and ages and ages. And I think um, you can see there is some rooting on the bottom. That's why I love using clear containers like this and like glass jars. I find glass like nicer than plastic just because it looks nice and it's a bit more sturdy, but you can use plastic as well. I obviously do. I could probably pot this one up at this point. I am notorious for leaving things longer than I need to. And this has been in here since I think about December. So it's probably definitely rooted, but I've just been letting it do its thing. Like I do really really love this one and I, I didn't realize for the longest time that the Pothos Enjoy and the Pearls and Jade are actually different plants, but they are. Um, and this is the sort of marbliness that you get on the Pearls and Jade, which I think is absolutely lovely. So very excited of both of those Epipremnums in here just because they are stunning. This one in the middle here is a Philodendron Jose Bueno, Jose Bueno, I'm not quite sure how it's pronounced. It's not got the heaviest of variegation in its leaves, but I don't really mind. I, I really like the sort of green on green variegation. I think I could probably pull out more variegation if I put it in slightly brighter light, but 
it is like I mean it's fine where it is I'm not too too worried about it you can see there's some rootage there just there so it is growing well and somewhat slowly I think I'm gonna wait a little bit longer on this one because I'm nervous oh there's a new growth in there can you see that I don't know if you can but there's definitely some new growth coming in there which is super exciting so maybe once that leaf is out I will give it a look and see whether or not it's ready to go in it'll probably be ready to be pot up at that point but yeah I could definitely put it in brighter light but for now it is fine where it is this guy is another philodendron this is a philodendron plaumonii I believe it's pronounced plaumonii plaumonii plumonii <laughs> I'm not too sure but it is also doing super duper well I don't know if you can see that there but there is a like decently sized new leaf coming out probably going to be about the same size as these ones this one it kind of confuses me because it looks so much to me like a mame like I, I kind of feel like they're almost indistinguishable from my current knowledge of them because I've not had a plumonii bigger than this hopefully once this one grows out I'll like kind of get to see the differences I think this one is a climber rather than a um crawler so maybe that's the main difference but this one oh my goodness look at that root there and like there's more throughout up there and just like in general doing really really well so I guess once this leaf comes out again I will be able to pot this one up too I think I'm just waiting for leaves at this point this is my Syngonium Wenlandii which I actually put in here quite recently like when I chopped my other one and like kind of rehydrated the pole but as you can see the roots on that are already coming through like, whoa look at that so much root already so if i feel like this one is almost ready to go back in probably very soon i find syngonium root really really quickly and so a box like this is better for that because i can just kind of take out one thing really easily and not have to worry about tangling the others and messing those up this i think is some sort of philodendron atabapoense it might be the dark form which i think might be a billy x atabapoense or it could just be an atabapoense i am not sure if anyone can tell I, th I find like all of the ones that look like this look exactly the same in my mind so i've just kind of <laughs> let it be what it is i don't think there's tons of root growth there's a tiny bit just right there um so it's definitely growing well this new leaf has emerged since i've put it into the prop box so it is happy enough it's just um I, I don't exactly know the id please 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 tell me if you know because i get so confused with these sort of long leafed philodendrons especially the dark ones which i love i think they're gorgeous and like one day i'd love to have a big one but for now it's just fine as it is Oh, here's the backs of the leaves, if that helps with the ID as well. Got a syndapsis in here. This is one that I got semi-recently. This is a syndapsis leopard. Um, one of two. I have another one that is in soil already, but this one didn't have roots, so I wanted to put it in moss. As you can see, it has produced some new growth. There's a new leaf coming in soon there, which is amazing, and it does look like there's some roots so i think it is happy enough probably once this new leaf comes out i will try and pot it up maybe with the other one as well so it can be a slightly fuller plant but i love this syndapsis and like how weird it is i'd never heard of a leopard before but you like it does have a very leopard vibes in its leaves like look at that and it's like textured as well i don't know how to show you probably there you can see the texture so it's like the reverse of that on the other side which is pretty cool but lovely little syndapsis this i think i could be wrong but i think is a philodendron tripartita 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 i thought it might be a um 
Campo, but I don't think it is because the Campos are more velvety, aren't they? But it has this sort of like funky tri-lobe leaf shape, which I find really fascinating and I really enjoy. You can see like the immature leaves. <laughs> These new ones here don't have the sort of lobey growth that the more mature ones have, which I mean is definitely characteristic of the plant and pretty normal, but hopefully I can get some more of this nice mature growth in here once it's potted up. This one I did just chop up the other day. I had like a longer vine. Um, I don't know where you can see it. It had like a longer vine that went through this whole thing and like up and up, but I decided to chop it into three parts so I can eventually put it on a pole because I think it would really like that sort of thing. And then lastly in here, um, I have no idea what this is. It is some sort of velvet leafed philodendron. But I don't know what type. Like it's not as thick velvet or as dark velvet as like the Milano Chrysum is. Maybe a gigas or something like that. It's got quite a thin stem there. And like it definitely looks like it wants to grow up a pole or something. There's a new leaf coming in, which is super exciting. But I have no idea what this is. <laughs> That's the thing with like getting props. Sometimes I just completely forget about them. I'll swap for them and then just have no idea what they are later. But this one, I don't want to dump it out by accident. There's definitely some roots going around the bottom of here. I don't know how well it comes off on camera, but you can definitely see some roots going through there throughout. So hopefully this one is happy as well. It doesn't look unhappy. I just have no idea what it is. So I'm gonna have to either find who I swapped it with, which I honestly can't even remember. I do so many swaps at this point. Or, um, <laughs> um, I don't know. Have you guys tell me what it is? I'm not sure. I really have no clue. So all advice is appreciated. But yeah, that is everything in this box. I guess I will put everything back now. There we go. And then I think I'm gonna show you what's in these guys. I have several little prop boxes that I use and they all kind of have one thing in them and I, I love these. I think they're great. So these are actually yogurt pots from a yogurt that Joe used to get and they are the best propagation vessels. The stickers come off so easy. They're clear. They have a lid. Like they're the perfect freaking size for propagations and like they're so so easy to use. So I love these. As you can see I've got a bunch. I've got four here and I would have more um, if Joe still ate this yogurt. Maybe I should get him to eat more because this is literally the best little prop vessel ever. So I guess since I have this one, I will show you this one first. In here, we have some Syndapsis officinalis wet sticks that I have had in here. Remember when I had that runner that I chopped up because it was looking terrible? Well, this is the, like what's left of that. Um, I wonder if I can do this without dumping water everywhere. Yeah, look at that. Okay, so there's definitely some rooting going on in there. You can see the moss is super duper moist, which is great. These containers stay very, very moist. I really never water these. Oh, there's also root along there, which is super nice. So like these are obviously rooting pretty well. Like they're proper in there. I can't just like pull them out like I could if they weren't rooted. So that is really good. Hopefully I'll be able to join these in with the mother plant at some point, but uh, I'm, not, I'm not holding my breath on it because <laughs> they like, I haven't had the best of luck with the officinalis, so I'm just giving it another go as much as I can. Um, so that's that one. And these are also really good because I can put like one thing in here and not have to worry about the roots getting tangled with anything else. It's just one plant so that makes things like really easy this one it's kind of hard to see because they're so so tiny in here but in here i have two 
tiny little Alocasia aslanii. So they're not corms, they are tissue cultured Alocasias, which is something so different for me. These were actually ones that were very kindly donated to the plant swap raffle or not raffled, the goodie bags. And so everybody who went to the plan swap walked away with one of these, which is so immensely generous of the Eden Labs who donated them. But these little tissue cultured alocasias in here, I've got them in a moss and perlite mixture. I literally just put these in here the other day um, because I obviously just got them. So I'm not gonna pull them out to show you the roots, but they do have tiny, tiny, tiny roots on them. Uh, they're just very fragile. So I'm leaving them in this super duper humid container. You can see all of that condensation on there. Very, very moist. This one has a Monstera obliqua in it, a little wet stick. And this isn't my only obliqua. I actually have another obliqua to show you in my next big prop box. My last big prop box has like two, three amazing, amazing things in it. So stay tuned for that. But this is one of my obliqua wet sticks. You can see here, I've just got some baby, baby leaves. I literally got it as a wet stick. So there was nothing really on it. You can see all of the algae has grown on this moss as well because it's just stayed so damp and I've had it for a very, very long time at this point. And it's just stayed in here. I've never watered it. You can see a tiny, tiny bit of rooting there, but for the most part, I don't see any roots, which is completely fine. I'm not worried about it. I think I might let it grow one more leaf before pulling it out. It's definitely rooted. There's definitely like roots in there. I can't just like pull it out easily. So maybe let it go a little bit longer before I take it out. It is like very nearly touching the lid. So I'll probably need to pot it up quite soon. But again, very happily just in its little yogurt pot. And then in my last yogurt pot, I have this, which as you can see, amazing growth on the moss here, but it's not about that. There's actually a plant in here as well. This is a variegated anthurium. I'm pretty sure it might be a magnificum, but I'm not positive on it. I have two seedlings in here. This one's slightly bigger. And then I've got a smaller one there as well, which are doing so, so well. I've had these in here for ages and ages. Let me see if I can... Is that a root? That looks like a root. I'm not sure if that's a root or not, but it looks like one. But I've had these in here for quite a long time. You can see all of this growth on here of like really lovely fresh moss, which I could I could easily like harvest this, all of this moss around here and like <laughs> use it for more things like moss poles or prop boxes or whatever. But they are doing pretty well. The variegations like kind of a marbly minty variegation, which I have honestly never seen a sort of variegated anthurium like this before. So when I had the opportunity to get little seedlings of it, I was like, absolutely freaking lootly. I think they were like seven pounds each or something crazy, which is insane, but I'm very, very glad I have them and hopefully they'll grow into bigger plants one day. I have this little Ikea Tupperware here with some wet sticks in it. I think these are all Adansonii wet sticks. They look like it because the leaves have like tiny little holes in them. So I think they are Adansonii's, but they're just from when I had a runner. The one problem with having like prop boxes with wet sticks like this is you do sometimes need to like take stuff out. I don't know how well you can see that because the light's freaking funky. Um, where do I put it there? There you go, now you can see it. But you can get like bits of stem that go a bit rotty, which in theory I should cut out, but um, oh, I'm just far too lazy. But like this one, oh no, this one's fine actually. Um, but yeah, as long as like the nodes are in contact with the wet sphagnum, it's fine. You can see again the growth of the sort of fresh sphagnum I have in here. That's why I love using this stuff because it just like reproduces, <laughs> which is amazing. I should probably take these couple out soon because they are getting kind of smushed by being in this box. But at the same time, I don't really care because I don't really care about my Adansonii anymore. Um, I don't even have most of it anymore. So that's that. And then this one is an odd one. 
I keep this one vertically, so I stand it up like that. I think I probably showed you this in my plants tour. Um, but that there is a Syndapsis Black Mamba, I think it's called. And I am trying my darndest to get it to shingle. I know I need to give it something more intense to shingle, but it's so stuck in there now. It's like properly rooted. It hadn't rooted at the beginning, so I was like trying to be careful with it. Again, we're seeing this lovely fresh moss. But even if it doesn't shingle, these sort of like dark, like leathery leaves are quite nice. They're different than the Trubii dark form. So it's just like a bit of fun. Hopefully I can get it back to the shingling state. I just need to give it something to like properly climb, whether that be a moss pole or a plank or something. But for now, it's just gonna continue living like vertically <laughs> like that. And then lastly, we have my smallest big prop box, the one with some crazy stuff in it. So let's open it up. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see a bit better. Tell me this isn't a crazy prop box. Again, I have some stuff that I took out of here recently, so it is a little bit on the emptier side. I feel like there's only like three main things going on here, maybe four. No, three. Um, so, to start with, these ones, they are both Monstera Escaletos, and they have some crazy roots on them. Like, I could totally pot this up at this point. Probably should like properly pot these up and put them on a pole, maybe together. I'm not gonna pull this one out because I don't fancy doing that, but <laughs> both of these are lovely Escalettos. Um, taken from my old plant, the one that I ended up selling to Claire, which she's now not had the best of luck with either, <laughs> so she's chopped it up. It's fine, it's, it is what it is, it happens. Oh, what's this? What is this? I have no idea what this is, but it is semi-rooted. Um, that's gross. Maybe some sort of epipremnum? I don't know, it just lives in here. Sometimes things just live in here and I find out what they are when they're a little bit more established. I've got a dead wet stick, that's nothing. This, oh my goodness, this thing here. I can't pull it out because it's not quite um, easy to pull out and I don't want to like break any roots off. This is the Monster Obliqua I was talking about earlier that my friend Francesco gave me at the October plant swap. He very kindly just like gave it to me at the end of the day which was so so sweet of him and I've had it in this prop box since and it is growing this here which has actually attached itself to the side of the prop box and like it's growing upwards. It is basically a runner. I think I probably do need to put this one on a moss pole sooner rather than later if I want it to keep growing leaves. Um, because right now this is just a runner and I'd prefer it to be leaves than a runner. But either way, like look at this leaf, it is insane. And then lastly, I feel like this is my prop box pride and joy at the minute. This is my variegated Syndapsis Jade Satin. Tell me that is not gorgeous. So I got this one at the October swap as well um, as a swap and it was just this one leaf and so I popped it in a little pot and slowly it eventually popped out this one which I'm not sure if it's fully like hardened off yet because the variegation is so different in tone like this is a much more creamy variegation and this is much more like yellowy green. Either way, it's super highly variegated. And when this leaf popped out originally, it looked like it had some variegation on it, but I was almost worried that it was gonna be fully green. So this, it has sort of like developed over time. I feel like it's kind of Polaroid variegation-ish. I don't know if I'm using that term right, but it is just like stunning. And hopefully I can get it to like maybe mature into this creamy variegation as well. It doesn't have like any more new growth in there and it doesn't look like it's any roots coming out of the bottom. So I'm just gonna leave it as it is because it seems to be happy in here and I don't wanna like disturb it. 
maybe I'll put it this way. That way, yeah. But yeah, the, this is like my rarer um, prop box, which I just have like crazy fancy things in, which are very, I don't know, I feel like I'm not the most fancy plant person, but this is, these are some fancy plants in this one. So yeah, that is my last prop box. So yeah, that is it. That is everything that is going on inside of my prop boxes at the minute. As you can see, it's mostly good stuff. And I have some room to put more stuff in. And I do need to take some stuff out as well. So I do have a little bit of work to do on them. Yeah, I think I think they're happy in there. So I'm going to keep using them. Before I go, I just want to give my patrons a huge thank you for picking out this video, helping me decide what content that I want to make. I also want to give a huge shout out to my newest patron, the newest member of my Good Growing Fam, Kit. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you really enjoy it. If anyone else is interested in checking out my Patreon, it is three pounds or I think four dollars a month and you get so much bonus content, live chats with me, access to the discord server, the plant community, um, your say in my videos, extra content and more. So if that's something that interests you, head on over there. I will link it down below in the description. Of course, absolutely no pressure. There's no need for you to sign up there. but. It is a great place to kind of get to know me better on a bit more of a personal level and then I can get to know you all better as well. So I really enjoy it. I like making content for my patrons. It's it's a bit more like intimate than the like general wider YouTube setting. Even though I do share like most things on the internet just like because I can. Anyways, join that if you want. Don't if you don't. It's fine with me. <laughs> cool. Right. Um, yeah, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up down below and leave a comment on other houseplanty things you'd like me to talk about in the future. And don't forget to subscribe for more. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!